Today, we're hanging out with Tom Shell Plumbing, and we're talking about how he's making about $4 million a year of performing service and repair in Florida, but he loves the drains, loves the water heaters, very busy man, but he's got 11 staff members to hold it down. Mr. Tom Shell, can you tell us when did your company start and how long did it take for you guys to make the first million? And what tell us, like, what was one of the best strategies that allowed you to hit that first million? So the company began in 1979. It was started by my dad. Uh, I was only five years old at that time. Uh, in 1992, when I graduated high school, I was going to go to college to be a doctor, which I uh, went to college for a bit. And I was doing plumbing for my dad when I wasn't going to school. Uh, fast forward three years, I was still making $5 an hour working for my dad. And I went to the secretary one day and I said, what's it going to take for me to get more money? And she said, well, let me, let me talk to your dad and see what, see what he has to say. So next day she says to me, well, your dad says, once you get your plumbing license, he'll give you a raise. Well, in Florida, you must have five years on the job in order to even sit for the exam. So I still had two years to go. So I made five bucks an hour for five years while going to school. Uh, so eventually, I just uh, gave up the dreams of becoming a physician and decided that I'm going to go the route of plumbing. I uh, worked for my dad until 2004 when I took over the company. And I grew it at that point to about... I think we had 50 employees at that time with 40 trucks on the road Damn. every day. And uh, 2008 happened. Everything crashed. We downsized to three employees and started over from scratch. We sold our, we had a big building, big warehouse. We sold all that and uh, sold all of our vans, all of our trucks and just the three of us took over from there. Uh, at that point, we completely stopped doing any new homes and just focused on the service and repair. And we, uh, it, we, we grew it by leaps and bounds, uh, just by honesty, in my opinion, treating the customers as friends, as opposed to a business transaction, uh, even though it is a business transaction. Uh, we we go in, if the newspaper is in the yard, we bring it up. If the garbage can is sitting out by the road, we'll bring that up. Little things that set us apart. Uh, this is what I always tell my guys. We're First and foremost, we are service providers. That's what we do. We provide a service. Plumbing is secondary. That's just what we do. So that that's the approach that I feel has worked for us. I like it. Um, I like that you you treat your customers like your friends and instead of just a transaction, I think that personal touch and uh, you said some stuff that I performed out in the field too. So I, I can agree with you. Absolutely. Can you tell yeah, us? Yeah, I remember you were, you, were a, you were a service guy for a while there. Yeah. Yeah. I did service and repair for 15 years, residential, yeah. so more like 90%, 10%. So 90% residential. Um, but anyways, I want to focus on, on your plumbing company is, um, so when you took over it, you know, 50, 40, 50 dudes running around, that's an army that's tough, right? <clears throat> that what, is. Let's talk about that a little bit. Cause one of the next questions is what is one of the things that held you back from making your next million, but you took on an army. And so could you tell us, I want, this is a good question. What did you have to do to control that army and get things under control the way you need them to be under control? Okay, so I, I when I took over for my dad, uh, he didn't have a whole lot of employees at that time. I grew it to the to the next level, um, and it was just putting the right people in the in the key spots. Uh, you can't oversee that many people on your own, and I tried to until the, you know, until I couldn't. And it was just complete, you know, chaos. You can't be in, in 20 places at once. So I had to put some people into positions that were, that where they could oversee 
each department. We had a guy that controlled the new construction north, another one that controlled new construction south. We had a service manager. And um, I was actually out still doing service calls every now and then at that point, but just because I liked it. But okay. enjoy it. Yeah. So um, your next goal is five million a year, right? Yes. You're crushing for. Um, just curious, what are you doing different? Different. There's got to be some kind of strategy, or else you'll produce the same number, right? I'm just right. curious. One of the one of, one of the many strategies that you're performing to get you to that five million a year. Oh well, I'm big on options. Uh, you've got to give your customers options. And the reason I say this is this, uh, this is the analogy I use every time with when in my meetings. And if my guys are listening to this, they're going to be like, here he goes. Uh, <laughs> so if you walk into Best Buy and you walk in the front door and they say, how can I help you today? And you say, well, I, I need a TV. And they don't just reach over and grab a TV and say, there you go. Have a good day, Mr. Shell. No, they they say, go over there and there's a whole wall of TVs. Which one suits you best? So we as professional plumbers, we go out to a customer's home. We're bringing the best buy to them. They may not know what's out there. They may not know about tankless water heaters. They may not know about water filtration, water softeners, um, touch-free faucets, et cetera. So it's a re repair, replace, upgrade are the three estimates we give. It's basically saying, here's what's out there. You make the choice. And it puts the ball in their court. So I think, I think people hire plumbers, electricians, air conditioning contractors based upon, do I trust this person? It's not always about how, what, what the dollar amount is. So we're selling ourselves, first of all. So uh, I think it's putting people in place that have the mindset that I have, that once somebody trusts you, believes in you, that you're knowledgeable about your trade, everything else is just going to fall right into place. That's the approach I like to take. I love your answer. I've been dealing with um, a similar issue. I'm going to call it an issue in my business. Um, okay. My business where... Um, we're up to 17 staff members right now and we're four years old. And I, in the year one, uh, there was like three or four of us. Um, and the, you know, they're not here anymore. <laughs> and the reason yeah. for is I had to hire better people, which cost me more money. Right. But I had to get more customers and for me to be able to afford a better quality personnel, better quality staff. Right. So I spent the first two years of my business reinvesting most of the money to try to grow it. And, um, right. And so lately, lately, I want to say this year, I made a shift on hiring and here's what okay. helped me a lot. And in, in my agency was, um, I get a lot of people that, that apply at strictly plumbers. And lately there's been a lot of people that work at plumbing companies that apply. So I started really, you know, yeah, I was like, wow, yeah. that's interesting. Um, and from other like companies that are in the plumbing industry as well, right? Like trenchless companies and so on and so forth, big names. And we, I have some of their, um, that, you know, I don't work with these guys, but like they're big staff members or whatever, the people that uh, they've been around for a long time. They, they're just looking for a job, a better job. So yeah. I have some of them. So I, there you I, go. It's hot. It's hot out. It's hot out there. People want to be inside. Yes, I I hired a plumbing manager, a general manager from a, a plumbing shop. I used to work at this plumbing shop when I lived in Los Angeles. It was called okay. Ford Plumbing, and Robert Ford owns it. And it's kind of like you and the dad, father, dad thing. And yeah, got, I think I think we spoke about this long ago. You long, and I, long time ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so um. She, they parted ways, I forget how many years ago, but she hit me up. It's a girl, plumbing manager, okay. right? Um, yeah, they come in all shapes and sizes. <laughs> yeah, so I hired her and honestly, 
it's been one of the best decisions that I made to, to hire her in my business because she, we do marketing for plumbers and I hired her company. She's a plumbing manager, such a perfect, such a good fit, you know, and good, good. She's a manager. She, she had to learn about marketing, you know, not right. as much as we do, but so we train her on the rest, but the other preliminary stuff, it's like hiring a master plumber versus an apprentice. Yeah. And some master well, plumber bad habits, you know, <laughs> uh, some do. Right. But right. So like, you got to just pick the good apple. Right. Good. And so Excellent. anyways, I just, another thing that helped me a lot is hiring people that come from like management or supervision um, positions versus regular worker bees. The difference between them is the proactive approach, the mindset. One's trying to get away with shit at work and the other one's trying to refine shit at work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I know I just, I'm hiring managers and they're building stuff in my company. They're proactive as hell. And it's made a world of a difference when I just hire. Management. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to look outside the box. You know, I, I'm king of giving the, uh, the guys with no experience a shot because you can mold them. You know, you can, you can teach them your ways and they don't have their bad habits already. True. And not, not all of them have bad habits, but you know, you can show them, this is what I, this is what's worked for me. And I've been doing this quite some time. So yeah, do as I do. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that, a lot of the guys run it like that and it, and it works for a lot of the plumbers. That, that's awesome. It does. So um, let's see here. So tell me what what's like what do you feel that your plumbing company needs help with these days? Well, perfect segue. Uh, hiring is always an issue. Hmm. Um, you know, there's only a limited works workforce in in this industry, and it seems like the uh, they, they just you just kind of seem to get the same guys from the same place, and it's a uh, you know, this guy worked over at XYZ company and then comes to see you and says, Hey, what do you have to offer me? Um, you know, we have, we have health insurance, we have, uh, retirement benefits, we have paid time off all the paid vacations. Uh, but hiring is always an issue. The, the work is there. It's getting somebody to it. And everybody, uh, we live in a society and myself included where we want now. Yeah. You know, if I, Amazon Prime came out. I'm like, I got to get that. There's no way I can wait two days for it. For uh, you know, my my new pans. I, they those need to be here by 5 p.m. today. So uh, that's it. Just serving the customers' needs, and you do that with staff. That's awesome. We're like circling around this whole staff thing. I feel like um. It was already hard to find good plumbers and this whole COVID thing and the money that they were mm. giving out due to COVID and it spoiled some plumbers. Some plumbers don't want to go to back to work. I don't know if you guys are still dealing with that, but that's been a nationwide problem ever since it was born. It, it has. Uh, in Florida, we didn't, we didn't have the restrictions as most people did. So, uh, I mean, you really wouldn't have known a difference except the appearance of people with masks on their face, honestly. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we tried the two week thing. It lasted a couple of days. Uh, they put the lines in the grocery store, the arrows in the grocery stores that you could only go one direction, which that boggled my mind, but Hey, I'll, I'll conform. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. We, we saw an uptick in business during COVID actually. Awesome. It, it got busy. That's good. A lot of guys got, blew up straight up blew up um i think people were home and realized what they had wrong yeah. like oh that i'm home all day and now i hear that dang toilet running or they're using more of their stuff and they're just breaking that it. yeah exactly where because they're i mean we we work the majority of our lives um until we retire but you know in regards to uh, hiring plumbers i think that is a nationwide problem and so about two years ago i created this thing called plumberhiring.com so anybody watching okay um it's called plumberhiring.com and i help you hire a plumber how do i do that well it's a advertisement it's an it's an advertisement of your company 
and it's a job opportunity. That's really what it boils down to, advertising your job opportunity. So um, I created a, um, rec employ a recruitment strategy. It's only $340 a month, which is like one or two hours of your time. But we go to work for you all month and we will um, have plumbers, you know, advertise your job opportunity, have the plumbers fill out the application. We interview them. I created a test. It's an official plumber hiring test and it's got over 40 questions. It's designed for service and repair. I recommend you take my logo off and put your logo on. And if you go to plumberhiring.com, you could see all these words, all this content on here. Um, these are websites where you can post your job opportunity and, you know, plumbers will apply. And the more you have out there, the more, you know, um, traffic you get. So it's a great some idea. Are, some are more popular than others. Like I can tell you that ZipRecruiter is one of the better ones, right? And then you can spend a little bit of money on there and like mm -hmm. post and blah, blah, blah. But anyways, there's, there's a whole bunch of them in here. So there's a little bit over 20 of them that I, I wrote out for you guys to be able to see. And then if you guys just want me to help you um, deploy your marketing campaign to advertise your job opportunity, uh, we'll help you craft that job opportunity so it's very sexy, very appealing to the plumbers. And then uh, we, we help them apply at your company. And to be honest with you, what I've seen is it's, it's less plumbers looking for a job and it's more plumbers already have a job and they're looking for a better one. You right. Know? That's, that's, what I, that's what I see as well. And, and so on Facebook, I, I love advertising, you know, plumbers for hire um, on Facebook because it's really easy targeting for me. Like, for example, you see my ads everywhere. Like, I see them as soon as right. I hit Facebook. And it's more of that, like you, all, your, all the plumbers in your area will know that you're hiring and, and Facebook is the bomb, you know? So it anyways, seems to be. Uh, and so anyways, just wanted Very to cool. recommend everybody to plumberhiring.com, you know, it works. Go do it. 140 bucks. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going there after I get off the <laughs> Thank you, sir. Again. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, the way it works is you're scheduled a free appointment first, you know, and then okay. we'll give you a demonstration. And we, we give you like, we give you a, uh, a platform where everybody that's, you know, applies at your job, you have somewhere that you can log in and look at all the applicants. And I noticed oh, like cool. one to a week is what comes in at the $340 a month. Um, if you want more applicants, we can crank it up and, you know, we charge a little bit more to do more advertising. Right. Big, but that's what I see about one or two a week for the uh, 340 a month. Um, and then you build this Rolodex of plumbers. That yeah. You know, excellent. I like that idea. Awesome, buddy. I'm glad you like it. And the plumber test, I, I after I make them go through the plumber test, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna rate them either high, medium, or low, based on. I'm. A, I need. I need to. I need to take that and see where I fall. <laughs> <laughs> I got an. I know an inspector that can help you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, buddy. So, anyways, let's let's move on to the next question. Um, sure. About your your plumbing company, like for example. Um, what do you like to, what do you like to spend your money on? Tell us about your hobbies. What do you do? What are you doing with all this money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I, I play guitar, so, uh, you can never have too many of those. Um, I'm a, I'm a watch guy. So I buy watches, uh, invest, you know, invest in the stock market. Uh, Bitcoin seems to be the new rage, uh, or not Bitcoin, but cryptocurrencies uh dabbling in that a bit uh looking to get into the real estate market a little heavier uh i like it yeah um, I, fly, I fly airplanes i i owned a plane for a while i sold it um i had cancer in 2016 and i just wasn't using it so i ended up selling the airplane now i wish i would have kept it but you're the third plumber that on this podcast that brings up an airplane and that really brought, yeah apparently it's apparently it's a lot of fun <laughs> you know? it, it is it's a blast and i actually became a pilot because i was afraid to fly so so i said well i'm gonna face my fears head on and i went and uh took flying lessons awesome so let's i i like it i think it's amazing um i i'd love to try it i don't know man i feel like I don't want to say the words. I'm, 
you know, there's accidents out there. I'm afraid of crashing. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Uh, but I mean, it's, it's typically due to weather or pilot mm -hmm. error. So if you, uh, if you make smart decisions, uh, my instructor, his, his words to me were always, if you've got time to spare, go by air. Because honestly, if, if the weather conditions aren't perfect, if you're not feeling good, you need to trust yourself. You need to trust the weather. And, you know, there were many times where we'd have a vacation planned and something just wasn't right. Either I wasn't feeling well or uh, there was a storm between here and there that we could go around. But what if it changed? What if it got bigger? So I would be like, you know what? We're just going to fly commercially. So oh. you, you've got to make good decisions. Gotcha. Okay. All right. That, that's really good to hear. And, um, and I always tell people, so it's a 40 hour minimum to get your pilot's license. I spent the first 10 hours learning how to fly it. And then the next 30 hours learning how to fly it without an engine, because we would go up, the instructor would take me up there and just pull the throttle back to nothing. And he's like, what are you going to do now? And uh, those things just glide and glide and glide you can glide one and a half miles per thousand feet of altitude. Wow. So you've got a lot of uh, suitable locations to put it down if need be. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she said. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rim <thinking>. shot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so um, another um, second to the last question is, tell us about your exit strategy. Um, I think you had some really exciting news recently, but what is your master plan? What's your exit strategy look like? Um, my exit strategy is I, to sell. You know, eventually I've got to. I, I wake up every morning thinking, thinking of retirement. Um, so, yeah, I, I'll eventually sell. Um, I have all girls and none of them are wanting to become plumbers. But maybe after hearing this and hearing your story about the, the woman you just hired, maybe they'll have second thoughts, but uh, you never know. So uh, yeah, eventually, um, eventually I'll sell. I um, just don't know when that day is. I hear you. Today we talked about that topic. Um, two things I want to touch base on. My first job ever uh, at 19 years old, well, that was my first job. My first job ever was at a mall, right? And then immediately I wanted to become a plumber because my uncle was a plumber. So at 19 years old, right after high school, uh, one summer is all it took of working at the mall to see my uncle. Was, hey, man, you raised your family on this. I should be able to raise a family too. And yeah, a bunk, right? So my uncle, um, he put me off for like two weeks because I was kind of a party animal, right? And then I kept, I was persistent, like, hey, what's up? Give me a job, bro. You got my other cousins a job and my uncle too. And the other uncle I had a whole family bunch of uncles and cousins that worked at bill Howe plumbing heating and air and restoration and lining and hv <laughs> the guy does everything now. <laughs> he went from uh in 1981 uh my my uncle started working with him in 84 and um i was born in 83 right so i'm i'll be 40 this year and so um back then it was like three guys you know now there's over yeah. 100 um, so I ended up working there and I saw the shop go from, um, I want to say, I saw it go from like 30 to 50 vans, you know, and okay. that was many years ago, right? Now it's a hundred vans. The reason I'm saying this is the dude had say, like a lot of daughters. I want to say about four daughters. Okay. Okay. They all had plans to go to college and live their life. Well, they did that. They went to college and they ended up at the shop. And they married. There you plumbers. go. <laughs> they married. See, we're plumbers. not we're not that bad. Yeah. So <laughs> they they um they got encouraged, right? But pops was smart. Bill Howe was smart, and he says, "Well, we want to open up an HVAC department and a restoration department and a liner department." So he assigned the girls to work at his shop for so long, and they eventually got contractor's license. And then they opened up the next department, and that was her baby. And now she, you know they ran with it. And that company is humongous now. It's the biggest yeah. plumbing company in San Diego. And so nice. I'm, I'm proud to say I started there. We have good blood. I still go back and they get, the, you know, 
I see him at the PHCC um, Christmas dinners mm -hmm. and we have our drinks and, you know, our wives dance together and it's just amazing, amazing thing, you know? That's excellent. Um, so anyways, your daughters could come back around. <laughs> they may, we'll see. They may, they may. Um, but I think selling, which is the next point, is, is great because to be honest with you, um, like it's kind of a hot trend right now and you can capture yeah. double the amount that you make in profit per year. And so I got in touch with a business broker that specializes in plumbing companies. Um, I'll give you the, the website. It's called Tradewise Ventures. I actually have a meeting with okay. him coming up in about two more hours or so. Um, I'm going to write that down. Yeah. Um, you know, as for Scott Mayer, um, the company, again, the website is called www.tradewiseventures, tradewiseventures.com. So Scott Mayer, M-A-H-M-E-H-R, Mayer, is, you know, the, one of the owners, and that's who I've been talking to, and um, we're helping him get lined up with some other plumbing business owners that want to sell, you know? Excellent. Yeah. So today I introduced them to two of them. One of them has a partner. They're beefing it out and they want to part ways. And the other one is just tired of working and he wants to sell. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going the other way. I actually just ended up buying another plumbing company that was, uh, he was retiring the guy who owned it. So I ended up buying his company. That's so amazing. we'll see if it's a good thing. Just, uh, it's less than a month ago. Congratulations. I saw it in the notes. Thank uh, you. Waiting for you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about that. I'm really interested in that. I want to extend our meeting a little bit. <laughs> sure. I, I like this topic because I've been into it a lot. T tell us, like, um, why did you decide to buy this company and do you want to flip it? Like, what's the purpose? Uh, no, I don't want to flip it. I just wanted to increase, just increase my call, call volume. Um, he, uh, he had been toying with the idea of retiring for quite some time. We, he and I had been discussing it for years. And um, I saw that he listed a few of his uh, tools for sale on on Facebook. So I contacted him. I, I'm like, hey, uh, I'd, I'd like to get this. Is it still there? He's like, yeah, come on over. So I went over there and he goes, it's yours for this price. And I said, meet me tomorrow. <laughs> uh, good price. Sweet. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I think, so, yeah. So we met at the bank and then we met, we, we went to the uh, phone store and transferred his number over to mine. And it was a pretty quick and easy transition. Oh, wow. um, that's really yeah. good. Here. Um, I, I was dealing with a, a business broker about two, three years ago, and we were evaluating my agency and, he was giving me some strategy on growing it and it was buy another company. Buy another really company. get there faster. You'll get the, you'll get to your goal faster. So it's like, if you want the X, Y, Z for your company, then your, your company has to be so big, go buy another one, or you can just grow it over time. Or you can, yeah, just that's makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Plus he had a really, he had a really cool phone number. Yeah. It ended in P L U M B was the end of it. Yeah. Right. so now i've got the number good for you man that's really cool um i, I purchased my first company uh, two months ago um the transaction oh nice february and it's a software company um it's a software company and we now own um so it's a yelp autoresponder for you know how i'm not sure if you advertise on yelp or not no it doesn't work in all the areas but you get messages right replies for you and just something Yelp doesn't advertise so or do so anyways we created this software together and um it's been amazing so I was taught to purchase a company that would complement yours and make it's kind of like adding a supercharger to your business you know right there you go his customers became my customers and now I own that <laughs> so it's been pretty cool nice um, well, looks like you're doing big things I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, we're now 17 members in uh, staff members in my company here and about 450 of them. So, um, Mr. Tom shell, is there anything else that you would like to talk about, uh, before we get out of here today? 
Uh, the, the only thing I can say is, you know, to prospective plumbers, you don't need to go to school. You don't need, or you need to go to school. You don't need to go to college. The trades are a great way to make a living. I've made a very comfortable living by being a plumber. And even the guys that work for me make a great living by being plumbers. Uh, we're a dying breed. We need some people. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be in the computer industry, the uh, desk job. This is a, a wonderful trade, as is HVAC, as is electrical. But it's just not being touted out there. You know, nobody goes to high school and, and their teachers are saying, you should, you should try plumbing. You know, it's never, it's all geared towards getting you into college. It's not, it's not necessary. I hear you. I hear you. That's, that's really all I got. <laughs> no, I love that. <laughs> that's a good topic because the plumbers, I feel like they went from 150 an hour to like almost 600 an hour. Some of the guys. Mm, and, I know. Uh, charge more for the services across the board nowadays. It's kind of a trip, you know? But, um, yeah, when you figure, you know, when you figure out your like honest hourly rate, it's 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 insane what it costs to run a, a, a company per hour. You know, it's in the few hundred dollars an hour every hour that van's moving. That's crazy. And you've got to you've got to eclipse that to make a dollar. Yeah, I and it's see. it's only getting worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I keep my I keep my thumb on the pulse pretty good as far as what my number is. It's it's important to know that. You know, you hear people out there saying, "Oh my gosh, a plumber charges a hundred dollars an hour." Not a good one. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, not a good one. That's that's very true. All right, Mister Tom Shell, let's get out of here for today. It's been really nice to catch up with you. To be honest, likewise, Tony. It's always a pleasure. Thank you, sir. And uh, I'll see you on Facebook and um, I'll be reaching out to you. Um, did you write down the plumber hiring.com? I did. I did. It's in my book. All right. I wrote it down the same time you mentioned the other one. Awesome. You can, there's a button that says, you know, schedule a, a free demo or something like that. And it, it'll be a free demo. And then you make a choice of there if it's a good fit for you or not. Okay. Awesome. Sounds right. good. Have a good one. And if anybody watching this uh, podcast, if you want to, hear more similar stories to um, Mr. Tom Shell, then keep watching. Um, we have somebody that I just recorded that is, that is doing 50 million a year and it's got some great insight and we're all learning. So I'll see you guys on the next show. Peace. All right. Bye.